I started having symptoms from coronavirus 30 days ago. And I thought I would make a video um, just to put on YouTube, mainly because the symptoms I had are not very typical. And when I was in the middle of it, uh, looking on YouTube, doing Google searches to try to find more information and just kind of getting people's experience with what they had gone through and when their recovery was. Uh, it was kind of hard to come by. I didn't find very much out there. So I'm hoping that other people that have what I had, which was a lot of nausea and vomiting with coronavirus, not so much the respiratory symptoms, uh, that this will be helpful in kind of giving them an idea what to expect. I know every case is different, but um, you know, it helps to be able to hear other people's experience and to hear that other people have recovered. I mean, that was a lot of what I needed in the middle of it was just some hope and an idea of when things might start getting better. So just to give you a quick uh, summary of the story, uh, 30 days ago, I developed a sore throat, a little bit of nasal congestion, and that night had a fever. I haven't had a fever in a long time, so I started thinking, you know, that combination of things sounds suspicious for coronavirus. So the, the next day, day two of symptoms, I got tested. The next day, um, while waiting for my test results, the sore throat started to move down a little bit lower towards my chest, got a little bit of a cough, started to feel a bit more feverish. And then on the day four, I got my test results back and it was positive. Um, that day I was kind of thinking, you know, I'm four days into this, uh, I've got a sore throat, but it's nothing like I haven't had before. This is probably not going to be too bad. And I was planning to return to work as soon as the health department gave me the thumbs up for that. But that night I started to feel some nausea and it just got worse and worse and took some Zofran for it, it helped a little bit. And I was able to get a little bit of sleep that night. Woke up the next morning, felt okay for the first little while, and then the nausea just hit again. And that began what was going to be about nine or ten days of, of just solid nausea, 24-7, just feeling at all times like you're about to throw up. And uh, I tried Zofran for it. Um, I tried uh, antacids. Um, some ranitidine, some Prilosec, and uh, nothing really did much for it. Um, I've had a reaction in the past to the Compazine type medication, so that wasn't uh, an option for me, and that might have that might have helped quite a bit. I don't know, but anyway, um, I kept thinking, you know, well, most people around day seven, I think they turn around, and the nausea just kept on going. I had a little bit of diarrhea, but the main problem was nausea and vomiting. Um, I ate a little bit on that day that the nausea started and then I really didn't eat again for about nine days. My goal was to try to get about a liter to a liter and a half of water in every day and that was tough. I'd sip in a little bit and just feel even worse. And So gradually what started to happen is I just became more and more dehydrated. Um, there wasn't anything for me to throw up, but I would get dry heaves several times a day. When, and normally, you know, when you when you're nauseated, you're like, well, if I can just throw up, then I'm going to feel better afterwards. And that didn't really happen at all with this. It was just continual nausea. So I got to day um, nine, and not getting much sleep, you know, the nausea was bad enough and just get 20 minutes here and there, but maybe two or three hours at, at night at most. So getting very tired, getting very dehydrated. And so finally on day 10, my wife was like, you got to go to the hospital. You know, you're getting really weak and dehydrated here. And, and I was, I, I've never been in the hospital since I was a kid in the sixties getting my tonsils out. So I, but I was too weak to resist. So we went to the hospital and, and they admitted me and got me started on some IV fluids that made me feel somewhat better. Um, tried some IV Zofran, didn't help. Got me on some IV Reglan, uh, R-E-G-L-A-N. And that helped a little bit, I think. Um, not much. I mean, I still couldn't eat anything. I still was up most of the night with nausea. Still had dry heaves, but... Um, I think the thing that probably helped is they also got me started on a daily IV uh, of dexamethasone. 
And I know they use that for people who have the respiratory pulmonary problems with COVID. And um, I think, I don't know, it didn't help immediately, but I think that probably sped up my recovery some, I have a feeling. Um, but I was in the hospital for five days, and that first three days really didn't get any better, but at least I wasn't dehydrated, and my electrolytes were off, I had a low potassium and some other things, and, and that got corrected with the IV fluid, so that helped some. Um, but day three was kind of the lo day three of my hospital stay, which was day 12 of symptoms, was kind of the low point for me because the night before, I was shivering throughout this whole time. I'd been having fevers up to about 101. I'd try to crush up some Tylenol and slurp it down. I couldn't swallow pills because I would just get this dry heave reaction to it. And uh, that night I had, I had, I just shivered most of the night with a fever. The nausea was really bad. And then the next morning my oxygen saturation dropped down into the 80s, so I had to be on oxygen. So that was kind of the low point. And one of the doctors came in to talk to me that morning, and she said, you know, uh, a lot of people around day 13, 14 turn the corner. And she said, when you do start to turn the corner, oftentimes it's a, a pretty rapid improvement. And I, <laughs> and I caught hold uh, on that idea and just held on to that hope and thought, man, I, I might be getting to the end of the, of the suffering part of this, or at least most of it. And sure enough, the next day, so now we're on like day 13, uh, I woke up and I felt a little less nauseated and I ate uh, part of like a fruit smoothie and uh, nibbled on a little toast, which was, you know, the first time I'd eaten in like nine days or something. And uh, the next day I woke up hungry and I had an Egg McMuffin that they made at the hospital, and it will go down as the greatest Egg McMuffin of my life. It tasted so good, and uh, I, I improved that rapidly that I was able to just get be discharged from the hospital that day. I didn't need the oxygen anymore. I mean, these things in general were improving. I still felt really weak. I mean, I took the wheelchair ride down to be picked up by my wife, and uh, you know, wasn't up to doing much more than just walking in the house and laying on the couch. But I was home, the nausea was, was coming down. It took about three more days before I would say I was eating normally. During those three days, I'd sip a little soup or eat a little bit of toast, but just gradually getting better and better. And then by about day, you know, 17 or so, back to eating pretty normally. I had lost 15 pounds, and in the two weeks since I've been home, I've gained about five of that back, and that's, I'm hoping that's about all I gained back, actually. At this point, I'm at day 30. Um, you know, I think everybody, no matter what type of coronavirus symptoms they have, if they're bad enough to, to last two weeks or land them in the hospital, then it's going to be a several week recovery before the fatigue is completely gone. I still feel some, but I'm, I'm able to hike a little bit. I'm able to, I'm back at work. So, uh, I've got some fatigue by the end of the day, but, but it's, you know, getting better all the time. Still get a little bit nauseated in the morning. I don't really eat breakfast, but, um, you know, it's, it's getting much better. And obviously I've gained five pounds, so it's not too bad. And, uh, my sense of smell, I lost that on about day three and I'd say that's halfway back. Things tasted really weird uh, the first couple of weeks, and that's getting to be more normal. I used to be a huge consumer of Diet Dr. Pepper, and it, I still don't like the taste of that, but I'm hoping that'll come back to be normal. Um, so anyway, I guess the, the bottom line is, you know, there, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, even though it seems like a long tunnel, but, uh, but you get through it, and, uh, and things just gradually start to normalize afterwards. If you're like I was in the middle of this uh, and just, you know, looking for anything to give you some hope and some information, I can tell you, you know, it's going to come come around. You're going you're gonna to get better. So uh, hang in there. It, it seems like a, a long journey, but uh, you'll get there and uh, you'll be back to eating lots of food to, to regain that weight that, you, that you've lost.